Our guest today is Susan Lyon. She is the CEO of Guilt Group, the leading player in a new e-commerce market, casually referred to as private sales. Susan, congratulations on the tremendous success. First thank of all, the you, growth Henry. is extraordinary. Second, thank you for coming. Third, what is Guilt Group? So Guilt is, as you said, private sales. Think of it as, as almost sample sales online. So every day at noon, uh, we open a new set of sales. Literally, we change out the store overnight so that we may launch 15 new sales today between our women's business, our men's business, our home business. And they are um, deeply discounted. It's, it's a way for brands to deal with their, their excess goods in a way that's very brand appropriate, very discreet, and it works. And it's more than women's fashion, Absolutely. which it was in the beginning. Yeah. So describe yeah. the men's business, for yeah. example. So, uh, we saw we had a pretty strong men's membership group, uh, maybe 20% of our overall membership. Um, and we decided about two months ago we would spin it out into its own store and do more. You know, not just apparel, but gear, gadgets, stuff that guys covet, right? And it's really on fire. And People are bananas about this. I mean, I've heard some stories about the yeah. average customers, whatever, but you have some customers who spend almost a million dollars on the site and so are obviously totally addicted to it. Is that what yeah, you're Yeah, we seeing? do. We have a, a top 1% that is just incredibly active. They spend an enormous amount of money. I, I mean, I've, I've never seen these kind of numbers before. Um, so there's, there's an interesting membership. You know, about half of it is... Uh, women, men between 20 and 30 who are in their first or second real jobs uh, and they're very brand savvy and this is their way to buy into brands they otherwise would not be able to access. They want the stuff, they just exactly. don't want to pay full price. Uh, or and, they can't, right? And, they're, they're just not at that place. And I think so, some of the perception is that this is sort of a closeout business and we've seen over the history of internet companies yep. and so forth, you get a lot of closeout businesses that grow tremendously rapidly yep. in the beginning because yep. they're buying small lots, yep. everybody wants them. Are you, are you going to suddenly hit a wall when you get to 500 million or a billion where you can't yep. find enough stuff? Well first of all, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, but uh, we're also doing a, a, an increasing amount of what we sell is goods that's actually cut especially for guilt. So it's not just excess. Uh, a lot of these brands are now looking at us not just as a way to move excess goods, but as a marketing vehicle. We've got a great membership base, and it's a way for them to get their product and their look in front of an enormous number of new customers who may buy full price too. And this is the and this is the same thing that a lot of outlet malls would do in suburbs. Mm -hmm. They actually are having stuff made for yes, them, yes, yes, which is absolutely. different. So it's definitely yeah. a misconception. Yeah. Yeah. So how big do you think it can get? Uh, I think that we won't know that for a long time. You know, this is uh, we don't see any limits on it right now. Um, we'll grow fourfold this year. It's just a very, very big, big business, and it's. It's not just because it's discounts, it's because it's fun. You know, people really engage in it. There is a, com a, a competitive aspect to this that is unlike normal shopping. So it's the early eBay experience where you've yeah, got to win exactly. and get there exactly. first and so forth. Except there's also instant gratification because you get to buy it now. That's right. You know what the price is and yeah. everything else. Any concern on the part of the manufacturers or Amazon or something like that that this is going to become, that everybody's just going to shop private sales? Why would you go walk into Saks anymore? You know, no, because I think that, that this has been going on forever on some level. There, there, there are TJ Maxx's out there everywhere. You know, there, there have always been outlet stores. Um, and I think the way we do it is very brand supportive. So. It's not just getting people used to buying off price. It's really engaging you with a brand and a brand story. So we believe we are actually supporting their full price businesses. We know that, in fact, because when we do a sale, people go to the website of that brand. So there's a, there's a good uh, kickback impact as well. And Future plans for the company? You're going to go public next year? You obviously have the revenue base to do it. Uh, you know, all things in good time. Uh, but uh, right now, we're just really focused on growth. And we've got a lot of runway here, and uh, we want to make sure that 
that we stay focused on what we need to do right now rather than on, on the public markets for a while. And is, does the growth look like the early e-commerce growth where companies were growing incredibly rapidly but just hemorrhaging hundreds of millions of dollars? No. Is this a very expensive business? No, or are you there are, it's a complex business. You know, we take inventory on about 70% of what we sell. Uh, so there's a, there's a warehousing component. There's a very complex operational component to it. As I said, we change out the store every night, so we're bringing in 100,000 units and we're shipping out 100,000 units. Um, and there's a very complex tech aspect to it, too, because people come at the same time and they want to add to cart at the same time and they want to check out at the same time. So uh, it's an, an easy category to enter. It's a very hard category to scale. And that said, suddenly it seems that this year everybody and their brother yeah. has discovered yep. this is a great business. Yep. Five competitors you hear about all the time. Yep. I get emails pretty much every week about a new one in yep. a different sector yep, or yep, what yep. have you. Yep. Anybody scaring you on that? Are they big? I mean, you're the leader. Yeah, no, I, I, we keep our eyes on them. But as I said, I, I worry far less about companies uh, where this is not their primary business because it is a very different business model. And anyone who is in full price e-commerce or has a store, this is radically different. Um, we do change out the store every night. So that makes it uh, very complex for someone who, who is used to having a set number of SKUs in inventory. They reorder when it's time to. Uh, that's not this business. So, so when we hear about department stores getting into it or we hear about you know small little shops getting into it, we're not really concerned about that. And international? Japan, yeah, yeah. you're there. Japan. I think France, there already was a huge one, Bon yeah. Privé, which was one of the inspirations for yeah, the company. Absolutely. So, I mean, you go elsewhere, Europe, Germany. Very possibly. I, 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 we're not immediately going to do that, but we're certainly keeping our, our eyes open and uh, looking at, at other potential markets, no question. Amazon just bought Zappos for a yep. billion dollars. Yep. Are they, do you fit into that? Will they come and knock on your door you soon? Know, uh, we don't know. Uh, there's. There's obviously interest. Uh, every major e-commerce company, I think, is keeping their eyes on the space uh, because it is engaging enormous numbers of people. And, and when you see engagement levels like that, you want to understand it. <clears throat> but uh, right now, as I said, we're really focused on just making our business really big. Great. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.